going to make a gift tag. I spray painted this with some primer and then I put two coats of my homemade white chalk paint on and I drilled a hole in the top and we're going to add a hanger and put a piece of cardboard in the middle. I've cut a piece of scrapbooking paper down to the size of a paper so I can print on this and then put it into my gift tag. So I'm gonna put this into my printer. I've designed a happy birthday graphic and I'm gonna print it off. I got it printed, all cut out. We're gonna Mod Podge it onto that little circle of cardboard. Got it all set inside and I put two coats of Mod Podge on top of it just to seal it up a little bit. Now I'm gonna use my twine and put a nice border around it. And there you have a way to customize gift tags. You can print off anything that you want on the piece of scrap paper, free lid off of a glass jar. So much fun. Next up cycle, we are going to make a magnet. Now a little trick to painting lids. If you put some paper on your jar, screw the lid on, you can spray paint your lid and it makes it a lot easier than trying to hang onto it and spray paint it or setting on something. You can hang onto the bottom of the jar, spray paint it. When it's all dry, you can unscrew it off and you're ready to use it. So I'm gonna take this out and give it a spray. When I'm painting my lids, I always like to use a primer. It's really difficult if you're painting these with acrylic paint or latex paint and you don't prime it first, the paint will peel off. Putting the primer on makes it stick a lot better. So all of these projects, I'm going to put a coat of primer on and then we can paint with latex or acrylic on top of that and it'll stick really well. The primer has all dried on this lid. I've got a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna cut a circle out to go in the middle of the lid and I'm gonna cut on the inside of it so it'll fit inside. I'm gonna hot glue that circle of cardboard into the lid. I want to print a little quote on a circle to put inside of our magnet. So I've got a piece of scrapbook paper. I'm going to cut it to the size of a piece of computer paper so we can put it through our printer and print a quote on the paper. I've printed off the quote on a piece of paper. It turned out perfect. Now I'm going to use my lid as a guide, cut the circle out to put on the inside. I've got my quote all cut to fit in there. Perfect. I'm going to use some of my Mod Podge and we're going to decoupage that onto that piece of cardboard. You can do this with photos, with quotes, with anything. So many possibilities and it makes a really cute little magnet for your fridge or your kitchen or anything metal that you want to stick it on. We're just going to press it right in there. So it lays nice and then we're gonna let it dry. Now while that's drying, I wanna make a nice fancy edge for this. So I'm gonna measure out what I need to go around the lid and then I'm gonna cut it a little bit longer and we're gonna make a fringe for this. I always have lots of twine on hand. I'm gonna cut a whole bunch of pieces about that long and that's what we're gonna make our fringe out of. Now we're just gonna fold these pieces of twine in half, add them to this other piece of twine that wrapped around the lid and just do a lark's head knot like this. And we're gonna add it until it's the length of the lid. love making these fringes. It takes your projects to the next level. We're just going to put that lid in there and I'm going to hot glue it all around the lid and then fluff it up nice. I'm now just going to hot glue a strip of magnet on the back. And it's ready to display. I think this turned out so cute. It's hard to believe that it originally started off as a lid from a salsa jar and the fringe completed it. The primer has all dried on this lid. I've got a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna cut a circle out to go in the middle 
of the lid and I'm gonna cut on the inside of it so it'll fit inside. I'm gonna hot glue that circle of cardboard into the lid. Now I've just got some jute twine and I'm just gonna start a circle and fill in this whole lid. And the twine is all filled in the bottom of the lid. I'm now gonna paint this with some of my homemade white chalk paint. This took two coats of my chalk paint and now I'm gonna put some graphics on it. I have a whole set of eight graphics that is fantastic for these coasters. They're in my Etsy store if you wanna grab them and you can make some of these yourself, save your, your little lids. And I'm going to put this graphic on this with my Mod Podge mat. Our graphic on the coaster has completely dried. I'm just gonna take a damp rag with a little bit of water and we're gonna rub off that graphic. Whenever I'm doing coasters, I want to make sure they're sealed really well. You're going to be putting a hot cup of coffee on this or something cold that's going to condensate. So I always like to use this engine enamel. It gives it a really hard coat, heat resistant, waterproofs it, and it's fantastic. You can find it on Amazon. I'll see if I can find the link to put, um, put it below in my description. And how's that for a coffee lid? We've got the twine underneath so it won't scratch your surface and you can set your coffee on it. Perfect. For this lid, I primed it and then I had these wooden cutouts that I got at the dollar store. I just put them around the outside edge and now I'm gonna paint this. I have a really pretty terracotta color. I'm gonna paint the whole thing. We're gonna turn it into a candle holder. I've mixed up a little bit of sand paint I love the texture that it gives and I'm going to paint that on the circles. I've got a tin can. I'm just going to set that in there and paint the circles with the sand paint. And I'll show you the texture that it creates. It's fantastic and it just kind of gives it a little bit more of a elegant look than just the flat paint. And I think this turned out really cute. But that sand paint kind of took it to the next level. Perfect candle holder. The thing that I love to make with lids are garden labels. You can pick these up at the dollar store, $1.25. There's 10 of them in there. And I like to put a label in the middle of these and then display them out in the garden. So I'm gonna put one together. This has already got a coat of the primer and I'm gonna paint it white. We're ready to put our garden marker together. I have a whole sheet of vegetables and herbs that is available in my Etsy store if you wanna grab them. You can make all kinds of these for your garden. Make sure you use the code SAVE50 and you get 50% off all my graphics in my store and get creating with them. I've printed off beans. I'm gonna do my Mod Podge reverse graphics and put it on the inside of this lid. We're all ready to put our garden marker together. This is sat overnight. I'm just gonna dampen it with a little bit of water and rub off the paper. All the paper is rubbed off. I'm gonna take this outside. We're gonna seal it with that engine enamel because this is gonna be out in our garden. We wanna make sure that it's um, sealed really well. Take it outside, gonna give it a good spray. The engine enamel's all dry. I'm just gonna put some hot glue on the back and glue it to the wooden stick. My garden is still all frozen, but I'm gonna be making all kinds of these to have ready when my garden is ready to be planted. When I tell you that I save all of my lids, I save all of my lids. This one's really fun. I can't wait to put this all together because it's gonna be adorable. I've painted all of these lids with some primer, spray primer, and then I've painted them all different colors with some of my acrylic paint that I had and drilled a hole in the top of all of them. 
And then this is just a tin can that I had. I drilled a hole in the top and holes all around the sides and primed it and then painted it with some of my homemade white chalk paint. We're gonna put a fun graphic on it. Be grateful, slow down, enjoy life. We're gonna use this one that's reversed with the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer. And I'm gonna make a wind chime. I've printed off the graphic on my laser jet printer on just regular computer paper and I'm using my Mod Podge mat and we're going to put it on the jar, let it sit and dry and then rub off the paper and we'll have a graphic on our wind chime. While we're waiting for my graphic to dry, I'm gonna put a hanger on the top. I'm just taking some twine, pulling it right through and then I'm gonna tie a knot, probably a couple knots actually, to keep that twine in the jar. Pull it through and then decide how long you want it to hang down. And then I'm just going to tie a loop in the top. So we have a loop to hang it from. Trim off the extra and we've got a hanger. I've got some of my thinner twine. I'm going to put this through the hole in each of these little lids, tie a knot so it'll stay on. And then I'm gonna do them all different random lengths. So when they're hanging from our wind chime, they all hang at different uh, spots on the wind chime. tied on all my lids and now I'm just going to wet the paper and rub it off so we're left with graphics. I distressed the lids a little bit with a little bit of sandpaper. I think it just kind of gave them that really nice rustic look. The colors are all fantastic. I love how colorful it is. My graphics all done. I distressed the tin can some too. I'm gonna to take some jute and put some jute on the top and the bottom with the hot glue and it'll be finished. It's all done and I thought it was gonna be easier to put it all together and then give it a really good coat of this engine enamel to seal it up really well. I'm not gonna have this right out in the elements but I'm gonna hang it up underneath a porch so it's not going to get wet or snow or anything at all, all the time, but I do wanna seal it really well. I'm gonna hang it up and give this a really good spray and it'll be all finished. This might be one of my favorite upcycles that I've done in a while. I love it. I love the little colorful, whimsical look of it. So easy to put together and I love using up free stuff from the recycling bin. love to coffee stain packing paper. I get a piece of computer paper and I just cut out some of the packing paper the exact same size as a computer paper and then we're going to give it a real antique old looking paper with coffee. If you've never coffee stained paper it's a really easy technique. I have uh, quite a few tutorials on my page on how to achieve this look. So I'll just do a fast kind of demonstration today, but this is just instant coffee. And we're just going to pat it on the paper, just kind of randomly let it splatter. You can also have a little toothbrush and you can splatter on with some, the toothbrush just to give real different effects. And you wanna make sure you have the paper completely covered. And then we're gonna set it aside, let it dry a little bit, and then we're gonna put it in the oven and let it dry and it gives it a real antique paper look. We have coffee stained, a piece of packing paper, and it looks old and vintage. And these are great to use on all kinds of different crafting projects. I have this glass bottle that I tinted a nice amber color 
full tutorial on how to achieve this look. Really easy, but I want to put a label on it, a nice kind of antique looking label. I'm going to use this paper that I just made that I coffee stained to make a label for the bottle. I'm going to measure the size of the graphic that I want and then I am going to put this paper through my printer and print right on it and we'll have an antique looking label. I've printed out my graphic on the paper and I'm just going to cut it down to size and then we're going to decoupage it on with my Mod Podge mat. Now because we've cut this and the edges aren't discolored anymore, I'm just going to take my sponge that has that coffee and just kind of sponge it along. Oh, there's how much of a mess I make. Sponge it along and make it look more authentic. We're going to set that aside and just let it dry for a little bit. We're going to add the Mod Podge onto the back. And then we're going to put it on our bottle. These, this technique is fantastic at Halloween time to make potion bottles and spooky looking bottles, but I also like doing them in the th farmhouse theme. So we're just going to take our bottle and just center it on and set it aside and let it dry. So we have a bottle that I picked up at the thrift store that I tinted and then I added a fantastic label with packing paper, coffee dyed. I love the way that it looks. And the paper that's left over, I have this label cutter that I've had for forever and it works perfect for cutting out really nice labels. I put a hole in the top, put some twine through it and you have some fantastic little gift tags. And this one is seriously so easy, but it turns out so adorable. Cut a piece of packing paper, a little bit bigger than your glass jar. I've just taken some and kind of rolled it and twisted it so it fits around the jar and some elastics. I'm just gonna take this and scrunch it right up, make it nice and wrinkly. It also makes it easier to work with when you've got it crunched right up because it kind of softens it a little bit. I'm gonna place the glass jar in the middle, get our elastics, and just gather it up all at the top. Take those elastics. And you might have to double up on it so it's nice and tight. And then we're going to trim off around the top. Got it all trimmed up around the top and then we're just going to take our twisted piece and cover up that elastic and just glue it with a little bit of hot glue. I've added a full plant in the middle. You can put some fresh flowers. This would make a fantastic gift. I added one of my homemade paper tags. I have a tutorial on how to make homemade paper. Really simple, really easy. You can check that out also. But how quick and easy is this to whip this up with some packing paper? Another way to use up some packing paper is to wrap up a bottle of wine for a gift. Another really simple way, but it looks so elegant when you're all finished. I printed off, smile, there's wine. And that's on that piece of paper that I coffee stained. And I put it through my printer and printed this I just have a homemade tassel that I made and I'm gonna add that on and a per piece of jute. Grab a bottle of wine for your next dinner party and wrap it up with some packing paper. I really love this. I think it turned out really beautiful and I think anybody would love to have a bottle of wine wrapped like this. Of course, the next is just gift wrap. If you're a true upcycler, you're saving packing paper, you're saving old wrapping paper, and you're reusing it to do up other gifts. I just pressed this piece of packing paper so it's a little bit more flat and it gave it a really nice wrinkled texture. 
I made this in a previous video. This is a lid off of a jar and I made it into a happy birthday gift tag. We're gonna add that. And then I'm gonna tie it all together with a little bit of jute twine. I know this is a super simple idea and everybody already has obviously done it at some point, but it's always nice to see a different twist done on it. And I love my lid off my glass jar that I made into the happy birthday, decoupage that on. Simple and easy. Also love using stencils on packing paper to put a little bit of a design on your wrapping paper. I've got these two little shelf sitters that I'm gonna wrap up and I thought I would use this stencil. I am just going to just place it in the middle. I've already sized it out so I know it's gonna fit those little blocks. And then I'm just gonna stencil that mandala onto this packing paper. And it'll make a really unique wrapping paper. A beautiful little package just with a stencil that takes that packing paper to the next level. And it's a cute little way to give a gift. For this packing paper upcycle, I've just got a glass jar that I've saved from the recycling bin. And I'm taking my packing paper and just twisting it into a long rope. And you wanna twist it quite tight. It probably will unravel a little bit on you, but that's okay. So I'm gonna twist this all up and then we're gonna put on some of our um, homemade Mod Podge. Okay, we got all kinds, all twisted up. Now we're gonna get messy. Homemade Mod Podge, I'm gonna add a little bit of acrylic paint, just a brown color, just to, we're gonna tint that paper a little bit. I don't want too much, cause I just kind of want a beige color. Mint, we're just gonna mix it up really well. Now we're gonna put that paper in that Mod Podge. This is gonna get really messy. Gonna get your hands dirty, but we just wanna coat it with a little bit of that glue. So when it dries, it'll stay together. You don't have to completely soak it. And then as we're pulling it out, I'm gonna retwist it again. So it'll go back into its shape. And after we have this all coated up, I'm gonna set it aside and we're gonna let it dry. Not dry completely, but enough that it's gonna hold its shape. We've got these all twisted up and they're almost dry. So they're a little bit stiff. They're really ugly right now, but stay tuned because it's gonna get really pretty. We are just gonna hot glue this all around the whole glass jar until it's completely covered. I've got it all covered and it's all dry. It leaves such an amazing texture on this glass jar. We're gonna paint it now. I've got some acrylic paint and I have a little bit of that coffee solution left over from when I dyed the packing paper. We're gonna combo back and forth between the two until I get a color that I like. All finished. I hot glued a wooden bowl that I had in my stash on the bottom. I think it has real boho vibes. Put a faux plant in the top. Hard to believe this was made out of a great big bundle of packing paper. I'm now gonna make a little booklet for me to keep notes and stuff in. I'm gonna use this as my cover. I've just cut it and folded it in half and I've pressed all of this paper so it's easier to work with. And then I've got three sheets that I folded in the middle and I'm gonna put them all together and cut them with my cutter so they're all the same size. Got them all trimmed up. I wanna put a nice quote on the front of this. So I'm gonna put this on a piece of computer paper and put it through my printer. Everything all ready to put our little booklet together. These are all folded in half and pressed. And I printed on the front of the brown piece of paper. I designed this graphic, it's very suiting for me. Creati creativity is messy and I am very creative. I'm just gonna put this together and then just staple it. Uh, 
I love the way this turned out. This would be really cute to do with kids or grandkids. I'm going to keep it on my desk, put my little notes in it. And hard to believe that this was just a great big wad of packing paper. And I've made something really pretty. I love to decoupage with packing paper. I've made some homemade Mod Podge. I have a recipe. I'll put the link down below in the description for the full tutorial. And I'm going to use a tin can. I'm just going to take that packing paper and just let it soak up all that homemade Mod Podge. And then we're going to put it on our tin can. The decoupage on my tin can is all dry. It's got a really neat texture. I'm going to now paint it with some latex paint. And there we have a tin can decoupaged with packing paper. I sponged on a little bit of white paint on top of the base coat, put some beads on the bottom. Turned out fantastic. I'm going to show you a simple, easy way to make bows that you can add to your gifts or scrapbooking, really easy. I've just cut a piece of packing paper, the same size as a piece of computer paper. I'm gonna pick out a design and I'm gonna print it on this piece. I found online a free printable book page and that's what I've printed it off on that packing paper. And now I'm gonna cut it into strips. The size of your strips doesn't matter. Um, bigger strips, you're going to have a bigger bow, smaller strips, smaller bow. I like to scrunch them up a little bit, makes it easier to work with and kind of gives it that rustic look. I'm going to be using my hot glue gun. You're going to fold. There's two pieces the same size. We're going to fold them in half and then you're going to fold into the middle, put a little dot of hot glue to hold it. And then bring the other one in. And you're going to do the same to the other one. Find the middle. Fold it into the middle. A little bit of hot glue. You don't need very much. Just to tack it in place. And once you get the hang of these, you can make them with one layer, two layers, three layers. It can be a lot of fun. And then we're going to lay them on top of each other. And then you're just gonna accordion fold. I do about three for this size and then scrunch them together. And now you're just gonna fluff. You're just gonna fluff up each section of that bow. And then you're ready to put it on your gift. All made from recycled paper. And you can also, if you want, even add little tails on it. Lots of fun to play around with. Quick and easy gift bows just made from packing paper that I printed a book page on. So many really great ideas that we can use to upcycle packing paper. I think I've got some really fun things that you can try out yourself. always saving tin cans and this is a great little project that I put together. I spray painted it with some black spray paint and then I drilled two holes in the top. I made sure that I put a block of wood underneath the tin can so when you're drilling it you're not drilling right into your table. Now I'm going to go in with another coat of my black homemade chalk paint and cover that whole tin can. And to speed things along, I'm going to use my heat gun to dry it really fast. I'm going for a really rustic look, so I'm going to age this. I'm using my Mod Podge mat, and I'm going to put a coat over that whole tin can. 
And while the Mod Podge is still wet after I've covered it all, I've put out some cinnamon and I'm gonna take that cinnamon and I'm gonna sprinkle it right into that wet Mod Podge and it's gonna give that tin can a rusty old look. You can also achieve this look with a little bit of sand or dirt or any kind of dark spice that you might have in your kitchen will work. I'm gonna dry it with my heat gun and then, then I'm just gonna rub off any of that extra that hasn't stuck into that Mod Podge. Now I wanna seal it up so I'm going back in with another coat of that Mod Podge mat and it's gonna keep all of that cinnamon all sealed on that tin can. Now this is a fun technique. After this is completely dry, I'm gonna get a piece of fabric and I've printed off a graphic on my laser printer, making sure to reverse it because it's got words on it. So when we're doing the transfer, if we don't reverse it, it's going to be backwards. I'm applying some Mod Podge matte and I'm going to place it down on that piece of fabric. And then we're going to sit it aside and let it dry for 24 hours. You wanna put a liberal amount of that Mod Podge on so it can soak into the fabric so it'll transfer well. It's been 24 hours and I'm just taking a cloth with a little bit of water on it and dampening that paper. And as I'm doing that, I'm rubbing off that paper and the graphic is going to stay on your fabric. And this is a really great DIY with so many possibilities. You can turn this into a tag, you can decoupage it onto a tin can like I'm going to do, you can add it to cards. Just get creative and you use your imagination. And I'm going to seal it all up once I've got all of that paper rubbed off with the Mod Podge mat, and then we're going to apply it to the tin can. And I'm always amazed at how well that cinnamon works on aging these tin cans. I wanted to add a little bit of fabric to the top of the tin can to finish it off. So this is just a scrap piece of fabric that I had in my stash. I'm using my glue gun and I'm just gluing it along the top edge. This technique is um, so great that you could do for all the different seasons. I can do so many Halloween graphics and fall graphics or Christmas graphics and just give it that little bit of that primitive feel and add to your decor. And it's all done with tin cans out of your recycling bin. Now that I have the fabric all along the top, we're going to add a wire. This is just a scrap piece of wire I had in my stash and I'm going to thread it through those two holes that I drilled in the side of the tin can and I'm just gonna twist the wire around and use my pliers to attach it. And now we're ready to put that label on the front of the tin can. Apply that Mod Podge mat to the back of it, making sure that we're putting enough on that it's gonna soak into the fabric and be able to get into all the grooves of that tin can. And then we're gonna place it where we want it. And then we're gonna just smooth it out and make sure that it goes right into that tin can. And I like the rough edge around this piece of fabric. I think it really fits with this graphic. I'm gonna seal up the edge with a little bit more Mod Podge and this is ready to add a faux flower and add to our home decor, tin can out of the recycling bin. I love this technique. We're gonna upcycle this Crown Royal bottle. We're gonna give it a couple coats of my homemade chalk paint. The chalk paint adheres really well to glass. We're gonna let it really dry in between each coat. And for my last coat, I like to sponge it on. It will get rid of any brush marks that you have in your paint. We're then going to let it completely dry and then we're gonna put a graphic on. This is a graphic that I designed, I made sure to reverse the text and it says, wash your hands. You're not gonna believe what I turned this into. It is so practical, but so beautiful. I'm using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method and I'm gonna center it right in the middle of that Crown Royal bottle where the label was, let it dry completely 24 hours and now it's the next day. I'm dampening the paper and rubbing it off and you're gonna be left with a beautiful graphic on this bottle. I wanted to attach a little tag to the top of the bottle. We are going to custom make a napkin. I'm using some crafters tape along a piece of computer paper putting it right down into the one ply of napkin, pressing it down so we make sure that it's firmly attached, cut off the extra. And I've designed a graphic. I'm gonna put it through my printer 
and print it off on this napkin and we have a custom made napkin. I'm painting this tag, letting it dry, and now we're going to decoupage this please onto the tag, but we're gonna use cling wrap. This is such a great technique and if you haven't tried it, you need to give it a try. I'm using the cling wrap. I cut it just a little bit bigger than the wooden tag. We're going to center that custom made napkin right in the middle of that tag and then we're gonna put it on some parchment paper, put some parchment paper on top of it, and then we're gonna iron it on the highest setting with no steam. Once it's completely attached to that wooden tag, we're gonna take a sanding block and just sand off that extra napkin, and this is now attached to the tag, and it looks beautiful. Now we're gonna seal everything up with an outdoor polyacrylic sealer. Because this is gonna be in the bathroom, we wanna make sure that it's sealed really well. This will not make it waterproof, but it will make it water resistant. Now, this is just pure luck, but the top off of that soap container that I got at the dollar store that we used up actually fits on the top of the Crown Royal bottle. So when we're all finished doing this, we will have a soap dispenser. I'm just adding some embellishments before we finish it off. I'm gonna tie that tag on. Fill it up with soap from that soap dispenser from the dollar store. I spray painted the top so it would be a nice matte black color and upcycled Crown Royal bottle. If you've been following along here, you know I never throw out my glass jars or my lids. What I love to do is I love to tint the glass. This is a really easy DIY. I like to use some food coloring. I got this pack off of Amazon. It's all kinds of different colors, so you can make all kinds of different tinted glass. And I just use my Elmer School Glue and the food coloring, swirl it in the jars, make sure it's covered really well, and then put it in the oven on your lowest setting until it goes translucent. I'm gonna turn this pickle jar into a kind of coastal vibe lantern. You're just gonna need some dollar store jute or twine and know how to do a lark's head knot and just a simple knot. And we're gonna create a really nice rope feature on the outside of this pickle jar. I have a full tutorial on how to tint the glass from start to finish. I'll put the link down below in the description if you wanna try that technique yourself. I've just cut a piece of jute the same size as the top of the lid and added some twine along the top using a lark's head knot. And now we're just going to tie some knots all along the uh, first row of this twine and we're going to create a diamond pattern alternating between the twine on each row. Once it's all finished, I have a battery operated candle I'm putting in the bottom and it looks beautiful and there's so many different colors that you can use and I just think it gives this great beach vibe. These are a lot of fun. These are spice jars and I've saved them out of the recycling bin. We're going to turn them into pet treat containers. You want to make sure when you're painting plastic that you use a spray paint made for primer on plastic first and then you can paint anything on top of it. So I've put the paint, spray paint primer on top and now I'm going over that with some homemade chalk paint and I'm giving each plastic container two coats of the chalk paint. Now we're going to do our Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. I've designed these graphics and made sure to reverse the text and we're gonna use this decoupage by DecoArt. It's the exact same product as Mod Podge to apply these graphics onto these spice bottles. These graphics are available in my Etsy store if you're interested in trying out this project for yourself. I'm gonna make sure I have them centered exactly where I want them and then we're going to set them aside and let them dry completely. Once they're dried, we're gonna dampen them with a little rag with some water and then rub off the paper. And we're left with these really cute cat and dog treat graphics on these upcycled spice jars. 
We want to make sure that we seal these really well so we can wipe them down. They won't be waterproof, but they'll be water resistant. And I'm using this spray lacquer and it seals everything up really well. So if you're a dog or a cat lover, grab these spice containers out of your cycling bin and make some of these treat containers. Next project, I went to my recycling bin and I grabbed an empty egg carton and we're going to do something really beautiful with these. You've probably all seen these before. Did you know that you can make flowers out of these egg cartons and they look so beautiful when they're all done? I'm just gonna cut these into each individual little egg cups and then we're ready to start our project. I've got them all trimmed around the edges and now I'm just going to cut in each corner right down to the flat of the egg carton. It's going to take quite a few of them so just work away and make sure you have really sharp scissors. Okay I've got them all cut and we're ready to put them together. You're going to take your hot glue gun and put a little bit of hot glue right in the center and then you're going to take another one and just kind of mold it a little bit and then put it so it's off centered to the one below it so it looks like petals you don't want them stacked up so the petals are together you want them off centered now we're going to cut a strip off the top of that egg carton and we're just going to roll it into a cylinder once you have it rolled together put a little bit of hot glue in the bottom of that flower and then put your cylinder in there and you have a beautiful egg carton flower. So I'm just going to work away at putting all of these together so I have enough to go completely around my project. And once they're all done, these are really tricky to paint. I'm going to put them in the top of that eggshell container. I'm going to take them outside and spray paint them with some black spray paint. And I picked up another one of those mirrors from the dollar store that were at the thrift store that I picked up for 50 cents. And we're just gonna glue those flowers all around the outside of that mirror. If you wanted to do different colors, you could take the mirror out of the frame, spray paint that round plastic part, and then spray paint your flowers so they would all match. The black fits my decor for where I wanna put it, so I left it all black. And look how that took that plain ordinary mirror to the next level with those beautiful egg carton flowers. I made some craft dinner for lunch. I didn't wanna throw the box out because I thought I could turn it into something cute and useful and not put it in the recycling bin. So follow along and see what I'm going to do with this box. First thing I'm going to do is cut the ends off the box and then open it up nice and flat. Once we have it all separated, I'm going to cut the front and the back apart. And I have a corner punch that I like to use. It just finishes off your project and makes it look nice and neat and you don't have the square edge. I had some scrap lined paper. I'm gonna cut a bunch of these pieces a little bit smaller than the front of the craft dinner box. Not that long ago, I bought this spiral binder. It's perfect for making journals and notebooks and I'm using it all the time and it's so much fun. I'm gonna put together a little notepad with this paper and the front and the back of the craft dinner box. When you're doing the front and the back of your little notebook, you wanna make sure that you put them together how you want them when they're finished and then punch them so you have the back and the front lined up the right way. And punched my papers and we're ready to put this together. And I'm gonna take my pliers and just clip off the long pieces at either end 
and we've taken a craft dinner box that was destined to go into the garbage and turned it into a cute little notebook that somebody that's a KD lover is going to think is fantastic. First thing we're gonna do is cut all those flaps off with a nice sharp knife and then take all the extra tape off that's around the side of the box. And because we took all the tape off around the outside, I'm gonna reinforce the inside with a little bit of packing tape so it doesn't all collapse. And I'm using my homemade baking soda paint and I'm gonna put two coats on and it covers really well over this cardboard. If you haven't made any baking soda paint, you need to try it out because it covers fantastic and it's really cheap and easy to make. And I picked up this stencil on Amazon. I just love the leaf pattern and that's what I'm gonna use on this project. I put a little bit of spray adhesive on the back of the stencil so it'll stick better and I'm going to apply it to one side of the box, press it down firmly, and then I'm going to use my texture paste. And this texture paste works great. It gives your paint a little bit of a raised feature when you use it and uh, it looks wonderful when you use it with stencils. I'll put the recipe for this down below in the description and up above here. Try it out, it's a really cool technique. And I'm just using a credit card to apply the texture paste and when you're all done and you've applied the texture paste over your whole stencil you pull it off and it looks fabulous. I love when I can take something that would normally be thrown out in the trash or put in a recycling bin and make it pretty. This would be a great DIY to do with your kids or if you need a last minute gift these make great gift boxes. You can fill it up with treats and then put a um, wrapper around it, tie it at the top with a nice bow, and it just finishes it off perfect. And don't waste that paint on that stencil. Push it down on a piece of paper and reuse it again for another project. You can also use these um, for all kinds of different holidays, Easter, Valentine's Day, Christmas, Halloween. Just use different stencils um, for different holidays, fill it up, and you could put flowers in them, you can put treats in them, you can put um, holiday decor in them. The possibilities are endless. If you have two or three smaller boxes, all kind of assorted sizes, you could do a nice table centerpiece um, for fall and fill them up with pumpkins and gourds. Uh, I just have so many things racing through my head of what you can do with these cardboard boxes. So I've decided I'm going to put a plant in mine and give it away as a gift. So I'm gonna put a nice burlap edge around mine. I just picked up this ribbon at the dollar store. I'm gonna hot glue it all around the top and I think it'll finish it off really nice. Okay, all finished. I'm gonna put a pretty plant in it. And doesn't that look fantastic? Now head to your recycling bin and grab those cardboard boxes.